Good morning, second grade Smarties, or maybe afternoon. All right, so we are here for our second reading lesson today. Now, this is going to look familiar, at least for today and tomorrow. It might change up a little bit. So remember, we talked about that big pizza question. So our big pizza question is still, how does change impact people and nature? So we are trying to figure out how difference around the year. So remember, we have those four seasons. That is a change. And how does that how does that affect us? What does that do to us as people? And what does it do to nature? All right. Our focusing question is what changes in weather. So that poem that we introduced yesterday, we're going to be talking about that more today. We're going to talk about what changes, what differences happen between the beginning, the middle, and the end. And here's our pizza bite question. So take a bite out of your pizza. All right. What does a deep exploration of beginning and ending reveal in the poem weather? So a deep exploration means that we are looking at all the important parts of this poem. So we don't have, it's not like a story where we have um, a characters, a setting, a problem and resolution, but we can look closer at what happens at the beginning, the middle of the poem and the end of the poem. So what do, what, can we figure out what is going on in weather based on the beginning, middle, and end? All right, so yesterday we saw this um, painting. So I want you to close your eyes right now. Just close your eyes. Ooh, what are you hearing right now? What are we listening to? Tell me in the Ev puzzle, what are you listening to right now? Okay, now open your eyes back up. So when you are looking at this painting and you are listening to that sound, what do you think, what do you think is happening in this painting? Hmm, look at what the people are holding. Look at the sky. And then look at the ground. What does it look like is on the ground? When you think of this painting, what kind of day is it? Is it a sunny day? Is it a snowy day? Or is it a rainy day? So this painting is called a Paris Street Rainy Day. So this picture takes place in Paris, which is a city in France, which is in Europe. So when we are looking at this painting and we were listening to that sound, that was the sound of rain. So when I picture a rainy day, I picture it kind of being kind of like gray outside. There isn't a lot of sun. It's really cloudy. It just kind of looks it just kind of looks dark, right? So when we look at this painting, we need to think about what our artist used to make this painting look like a rainy day. So artists use different colors to show moments in time or to tell a story. So I want you to also look at over here where my cursor is. This is called a color palette. Everyone say color palette. Good job. So a color palette is what artists use to mix their colors for their artwork. So when we are looking at these color palettes, I want you to think, and I want you to tell me in the Ebb puzzle, what colors are you seeing in this picture? And what colors do you think the artist would use for his color palette? So I'm gonna think out loud because I know it's a rainy day and I know the artist is wanting me to know it's a rainy day. I'm seeing a lot of gray. 
I'm seeing a lot of gray. So I'm thinking on his color palette, he might have mixed like white and some blues and some blacks to make some gray colors. I'm also thinking and seeing that the artist also wanted to put some color. So what kind of vibrant, what kind of popping colors do you see that the art artist used to make the painting stand out? All right, I'll give you a second to look at that. Get your colors in Ed Puzzle. What colors did the artist use to make it look like a rainy day? All right, so when we are thinking about what we are talking about, we're talking about, hmm, we said fall. Fall is a season. So, hmm, if this painting is showing seasons, what season do you think this painting shows? Tell me in a puzzle. I'll give you a second to think about it. I'm going to give you some clues. April showers bring May flowers. Ooh, what season is during April and May? Hmm, it's a season between winter and summer. I'm noticing that the artist is also showing that these people are in longer sleeves clothing. I'm thinking out loud that if he was trying to show winter, we would probably see snow on the ground. So what season might it still be chilly enough to wear a jacket, but a season where it rains a lot? Tell me in the Ed puzzle. All right. So if we were to use colors to make a color palette over here. So I want you to pretend that you get to color on this color palette. What colors would you put in your color palette to show this rainy day? I'm going to give you a hint. This shows spring. <gasps> This is spring. I know when we think of spring, we think of flowers and trees coming to life, but it also rains a lot in spring. So this is supposed to show the season of spring. So based on these colors that we see in the painting, why would what colors would you use and why? You guys told me that in the last question in your Ed puzzle, but I'm gonna think out loud. I would think that I would use some grays and maybe some blues to show this rainy day, right? When I think of rain, I think of blue and I think of gray. And I think the colors that are used are to show what we think of with a rainy day. All right, so now let's look at the rest of our paintings. So we know this painting shows spring. So these paintings must mean it shows the rest of the seasons. Ooh, so I want you to think, how does the artist use color to show what season comes after spring? <gasps> Summer, right? What color did the artist use a lot of to show that it was summer? I'm seeing a lot of green. I'm seeing blues. I'm seeing that people are in swim. They're in swim clothes. They're laying on some grass. What about this one? What season comes after summer? Fall. What happens to nature during fall? In the Ed Puzzle, I want you to tell me what colors did the artist use to show it was fall? All right, I'm seeing, I'm seeing that the artists use some yellows, some reds, and some oranges. Why would they use those colors? Because our leaves change into those colors during the fall, right? And in this final painting, how did the artist use color to show that it is winter? What color do you see most of? I see a lot of white. What could that mean? That means that there's wood on the ground. Snow, right? So artists use color to tell a story or to show a scene. So kind of pictures are real life frozen, right? So artists use 
they use color and they use their imagination to create a picture made of paint or maybe crayons or different mediums of art to tell a story. All right, so now we're switching gears. Remember our pizza bite question was, a, how can we do a deep exploration to know what is happening at the beginning and the end? So I'm going to read our poem for you. All right, so get your listening ears, bodies nice and straight, here we go. Dot, a dot, 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 a dot, dot, spotting the window pane. Spack, a sp spack, speck, flick, a flack, fleck, freckling the window pane. Hmm. What is something that can look like dots on a window pane? Hmm. A spatter. A scatter, a wet cat, a clatter, a splatter, a rumble outside. Huh. I wonder what can sound like rumbling outside hmm, in, in the sky. We sometimes hear it when something is going on with the weather. Umbrella, 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 bumper shoot, barrel of rain slosh a galosh slosh a galosh slither and slather a glide a puddle a jump a puddle a jump a puddle a jump puddle splash a juddle a pump a luddle a dump a puddle pud muddle jump in and slide so i want you to think what kind of weather do you think is happening, is going on outside? So it, so my head, I'm making a picture movie in my head. I'm picturing someone sitting inside, looking outside from their window. So let's think at the beginning. Oops. Let's think at the beginning. How do you think, because we know what's happening outside. What words tell us that it's raining at the beginning in these yellow spots? Dot, a dot, 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 a dot, dot, spotting the window pane. What is a word that might tell you that it's raining? Tell me in the Ebb puzzle, what word in those two lines told you that rain is going down on the window pane? So we know that it's kind of, and there's like flicks of rain, right? When it's flicks of rain and freckling the window pane, some freckles on our faces can be big, but most of them are small. So is it a heavy rain or a light rain in the beginning? It's sounding like it's kind of a light rain outside. All right, let's, let's hear what happens later. A spatter, a scatter, a wet cat, a clatter, a splatter, a rumble outside. If we hear rumbling outside, what does that mean it's doing? Hmm, in a storm, what is that rumbling called? <gasps> it's called thunder, right? So it's, it's sounding like it's starting to thunder outside. Ooh, so there's our middle. There's our beginning. All right, we're going to skip the blue. We're going to come back. Let's think about what's happening at the end. A puddle, a jump, a puddle, a jump, a puddle, a jump, puddle, splash. Ooh. What does a puddle tell us? A puddle is made of what? It's made of water. So if there's a puddle on the ground, does there mean that there was only a little bit of rain or did there have to be a lot of rain for it to make a puddle? Yeah, the rain got heavier, right? So at the end, we would say that the rain got heavier. So let's go back to the middle. So towards the beginning, it was starting to rumble outside and it was and the rain was starting to get a lot heavier. It was starting to rain a lot more. 
I want you to think what's happening in the middle. I want you to picture that you're sitting in your house, you're looking out the window, and what are you going to see in this rainstorm? Are you ready? Umbrella, 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 bumper shoot, barrel of rain. Slosh a galosh, slosh a galosh, slither and slather a glide. So bumper shoot, this word right here, a bumper shoot is another word for umbrella. That is a vocabulary word. Hmm, so if there's an umbrella outside, is it just floating by itself? No, what does that mean? It means someone's holding it. Oh, so someone is using their umbrella to go outside, right? Slosh a galosh. Galosh is a type of shoe. It's like a rain boot. So if you put your galoshes on, you're putting on rain boots. Ooh, so in the middle, it sounds like someone is getting their umbrella and rain boots to go do what at the end? Tell me, what is someone doing at the end of our poem? So they're noticing it's raining outside. They see someone go outside with their umbrella and their rain boots. What is the person outside doing at the end? What are they doing in the rain? A puddle, a jump. A puddle, a jump. A puddle, a jump, puddle, splosh. Whoo, tell me in the ad puzzle, what is this person doing outside in the rain? All right, kiss your brains. We are doing a lot of thinking. All right, and now it's time for our deep dive. Everyone go deep dive. All right, now we are taking another bite out of our pizza slice. Take a bite. Today, we are talking about vocabulary again, but we're talking about a word that was in our poem. So this was a line at the beginning, and it says, spack, a spack, speck, flick, a flack, fleck, freckling, the window pane. So I want everyone to, I want you to pretend that you have water on your hand. Let's say you're in the bathtub or maybe you've just washed your hands and you still have water on your hands and you start doing this. So a flick is a light, sharp movement. It happens really fast. So let's say that you are flicking, it's an action word, Everyone pretend that you are flick, flicking water on a mirror. Ooh, what does that water on a mirror look like? It looks like rain, right? So picture that you are the person sitting inside looking at the freckling of the window pane. What's freckling the window pane? Rain. So flick is an action word. It's something I can do. If I was flicking paint off a paintbrush, or even if you're flicking water off your fingers, would it leave small drops of water or big drops of water? If I'm flicking water onto a mirror, would you see big, would you see big drops or small drops? We would see smaller drops, right? Because we talked about at the beginning of the poem that it was kind of a light rain, right? We were seeing little dots and drops. So let's say that we didn't know what the word flick means. What if we didn't have an action word? Do you remember what we can use to find the meanings of words? Give you a hint. We can use a dictionary, right? So we are going to go to our online dictionary. We still have the word change. We're going to change it to flick. So flick and that C-K, flick. It's going to think for a second. All right. So we want to talk about flick as a verb. A verb is an action word. It's something we can do. So to flick means to move something with a short, quick movement. Like we flick a switch. The snake flicked its tongue in and out. A cow flicking its tail back and forth or she flicked her hair back over her shoulder. Watch, I'll do it again. 
flick. It's a fast movement that we can do. So I want you to, in the end puzzle, tell me a sentence using the word flick. Remember, flick is to mean is to do a fast moving. So give me a sentence using the word flick. She flicked her hair behind her head. The cow flicked its tail back and forth. All right, second grade smarties, you are doing a fantastic job with reading. Keep working hard, keep that growth mindset, and I will see you tomorrow. Bye, guys.